I think the very first time I ever decided and determined that I was going to hike the Appalachian Trail, I don't think that there was ever a question in my head like, will I finish or will I not finish or am I just attempting this? I wasn't definitive about making it to Katahdin. It was just a, a goal. And I don't think at that point that I, I really took into consideration physical limitations. We only have this one life and we only have this one chance to do it and I want to do mine and I want to look back on it and it's so full of things that I can look back and say I did everything I wanted to do and I got to fulfill myself and I got to, to go on all these random crazy adventures that might seem reckless and, and young and dumb but I think that ultimately at the end of, at the end of my story I have a story. Getting on the trail, getting going, getting my pack on, it was like as soon as I started walking, like I could actually physically feel my body. Like it just felt good and it felt right. And it felt like that was the exact moment that I needed to be in and live in in that, in that perfect moment. I was hiking, I was going, I was doing it. That was it. Honestly, life wasn't super different. It was a lot better and there's so much more enjoyment when you actually have to speak to one another face to face rather than through your phone or looking down and when you know we stop for water or you stop for lunch or whatever you're looking at each other and being like how are you like are you okay and at Amicolola you can go in and you can sign a registry and a hiker registry and you have a number the number of whoever you are that signed in like number one two three four five and I happen to be number 234 and I had said that I was obsessed with the number nine, it was my favorite number, and that I could make any number in the world come out to nine. It didn't have to make sense, I would just make things up. And uh, we had discussed what hiker number we were, and I'd said I was 234, and some guy that I never even saw again the entire time I was on the trail said, hey, 234 adds up to nine. And I was like, I know. And that was it. <laughs> and so they started calling me nine. Not, not the best story, <laughs> but it's the only one I have. <laughs> That's what I have. To work with. So I'm nine. It's just a, a name and it kind of gives you a new identity because I think that everybody comes to the trail wanting, seeking out themselves, um, seeking out something else in life, seeking some sort of, you know, alternate them. And so I think a lot of people, it gives them a chance, whether they name themselves or somebody else names them, it gives them a chance to actually be something that maybe they aren't at home or maybe be something that they've always wanted to be or maybe just be themselves that no one else has ever allowed them to be. They can just know you as Nine, or they can know you as Chilwa, or they can know you as Chewy, or they can know you as, as they say in Mexico. Like, they don't have to know you for who you are. They can know you for who you are on the trail. And I think that that means a lot for a lot of people. Okay, so um, this was day 57. May the 2nd, 2015, uh, the trail crosses over 421 mile marker, 454.1 of the Appalachian Trail. We only did about eight miles today to 421 and we camped right before the road. There seemed to be a worry about water for, of some sort for everyone, but overall it was a super easy day. Everything is mostly flat, very few hills and almost zero climb today to speak of. Even though we did eight miles, I feel like we did absolutely nothing. Despite the ease, my knees hurt again as well as my feet. My foot is doing the getting stuck thing again. The right foot, just a little further back on my foot and not at the toe joint. We'll see how that, we'll see what that's all about at some point, I guess. Everybody complains, everybody has those issues with those same body parts. But I think that this was the first time that my feet actually were hurting to a point that I knew that it was something beyond just the normal hiker wear and tear. I would say the pain in my foot was pretty persistent most of the time. It wasn't something that really ever let up. It was something that, that hurt continuously. There were some days where it would hurt extremely bad and some days where I was like, oh, no, nah, I'm cool. But um, I think the majority of it, I, I lied to myself about how bad it hurt. 
the actual medical term for what my first initial foot surgery was for in 2013 is called hallux rigidus, which is where it's basically like an arthritis of the, of the big toe joint. Um, I have it in both feet. My right foot has already had the surgery performed on it. Um, the surgery was not necessarily successful. It was successful at the time, but now I have, um, it's proving that my bone can't withstand that surgery. I felt like if I didn't talk about it as much or if I maybe just kind of um, downplayed it, not just to them, but to myself, that it wasn't, it wouldn't be as bad. Or I thought that maybe it would work its way out, that that pain would just kind of disappear and that maybe I would be stronger in the end. It was just a hard reality that I knew I had to deal with and I and I felt terrible for the people I was hiking with because I did know that, that has to be a burden because a lot of those people could have hiked a lot faster and gotten a lot of more mile, a lot more miles in but they were holding themselves back because I was part of the group and because I think that they genuinely cared about me as a person and as a friendship that they didn't want to just leave me the same way that I didn't want them to leave me either the last bit of my hike it, I mean I had fun with my friends and I had a good time but honestly overall physically I was I was pretty done, I think, I, and I, I knew that. It was just trying mentally to accept that with my, within myself and to, to realize that the lie was almost done. For me, the worst part was New York, Connecticut, um, New Jersey even. Most of New York was extremely rocky, and by rocky, I mean bouldery, and by bouldery, I mean it was like the world was just made out of rock. And it was just these big slabs that would go on for hundreds of feet of just rock. When it rained, they were wet and they were slippery. And when it was dry, all the pine needles were, were on them and they were slippery. And for the normal average human, it was probably a lot more fun than difficult because it was kind of a different, it was a change up. It was something different that we hadn't really seen before. And there's some photos that people would take and you could see all of everybody sitting and kind of laughing and joking and I'm just sitting there bent over, you know, just visibly miserable and in a lot of pain. We had stopped in Great Barrington, Maine. I knew that I had to stop there. I had a package there. It was a three mile walk to the to the um, post office. Three miles there and three miles back and I was done and I had kind of said that I, I needed to take a minute and that was I think that was when I really I said okay like I can keep pushing this and I know I can keep pushing this and I know that I can make it to wherever I want to make it however is it worth it is that payout worth it is is the end result of knowing that I could really really mess something up for the rest of my life is that worth it and so after um, some phone calls I called a couple of friends back home weighed my options out and I decided that that I needed to come home, that I had other things in life that I wasn't done doing. Going home was the most heartbreaking part of the entire experience. I knew it was what I needed to do and I felt confident in that decision, but it was still hard to, to sit here and know that that was it. That was my last night. Springer Mountain, Georgia, the Great Barrier to Massachusetts, and I hiked 1,521 miles. It's a pretty it's a pretty large chunk, and I think that's something that I can really like look back on and feel proud of the fact that I went that far. I don't care if I hiked with you for six months straight, or if we hiked together for one day, or if I said hey to you in the beginning or the end, or if you said hey to me and I nodded at you in some weird begrudging way because I was having a terrible day. I'm so grateful that I met each and every one of you and that I got to, I, I, I can say, from the deepest part of my heart that you were part of my greatest life experience that I've ever had and that I probably ever will have. And, and I can't wait to hear, um, you know, one day in the future, like how, how you turned out, like what, what you're doing, um, what you're going to do and what your plans are. And I really hope that, that I had even a fraction of the impact that you had on my life.